Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the different types of seat belt pretensioners. This one, this one on the buckle side, and the last one is gonna be the combination of these two. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at each one of them to see how they work. I'm gonna explain the common problems on each one and how to diagnose them. It's really important to know about the cautions as well when you are working on the seat belt pretensioners. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna deploy one of these seat belt pretensioners to see how they really work in the event of accident. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also find our online courses on udemy.com. For finding the online courses, check the link in this video description. So first of all, you all know that the seatbelt pretensioner is a mechanism installed on the seatbelt to pull the driver or passenger body back toward the seat before airbag deploys. Because first of all, having the seatbelt fastened is really important, even more important than the airbag itself, because seatbelt is gonna prevent the body to move forward in the event of accident. But when you have a seatbelt pretensioner installed on the car, not only your body is not gonna move forward, but also this seatbelt pretensioner is gonna retract the seatbelt to pull the body back toward the seat to make enough room for the airbag to deploy or to keep the driver or passenger away from the dashboard. So when we say we have a seatbelt pretensioner, it means not only we have a normal mechanical lock, but also we have a gas generator over here, which is gonna generate the gas to retract the seatbelt. Seatbelt pretensioners can come in different designs. For example, this is actually one of the most common designs which is on the retractor side. As you see, this is the pretensioner mechanism, which is located on the retractor. On some other designs, we have the pretensioner on the buckle side. It means in the event of accident, we will have the buckle put. And we have some other designs that we have both of them at the very same time. So this is removed from a Nissan and on the driver's side. So in this design, we have a seatbelt pretensioner on the retractor, as you see it. And exactly on the same seat belt, on the other side of the seat belt, we have this pretensioner over here as well. So I'm gonna explain each one of them one by one to see how they really work. So this design, which is really common and popular, is on the retractor side. So as you see, this is the pretensioner mechanism. There's one spring over here. I removed the spring assembly and I removed the bolt to make it faster work for the video. And right now, I can take the entire pretensioner assembly out. This is the pretensioner assembly. And the pretensioner mechanism, as you see, we have the gas generator or igniter right here, which is connected to a pipe. Inside this pipe, we have so many steel balls. It means in the event of accidents, airbag control module will ignite this gas generator and that massive amount of generated gas is gonna push all this inside this pipe. So what's gonna happen on the other side? When those steel balls are moving inside this pipe, there is one ring inside, as you see that ring, which is gonna rotate as a result of these steel balls movement. So when that ring rotates, it's gonna rotate this gear as well. And by having this gear rotated, we're gonna have the seat belt retracted just like this. So basically everything is for rotating that rain gear to rotate this one and to retract the seat belt. And if I remove this part, I'm gonna show you the other components. So this one is holding everything together. And as you see right here, this is the ring gear that I was talking about. So basically each one of those steel balls can just sit right here, can push this one to rotate this gear on the seat belt retractor. This one is gonna rotate just like this. And if I take everything out, so you see the steel balls? They're just right there. There's one spring over here. That's why all of them are spring loaded. You can see them right now. If I push them down, they're gonna get back up. This is how it works. But 
You need to remember that in case of accidents, when accident happens, when this one is deployed, you cannot use this one anymore because this material is already ignited and seat belt is locked. So you have to replace the entire pretensioner assembly. But what some guys do, they take the entire assembly out like what I did and they remove all these steel balls. And by doing that, they are actually turning the seat belt pretensioner to a normal seat belt. Which is of course really dangerous because the next time that accident happens, the pretensioner is not going to work anymore. It's going to be just a normal seat belt. You got to be careful if someone is suggesting you to fix the seat belt pretensioner. It means they have to replace the entire assembly, at least this part. Even if they are not replacing that part, this part must be replaced. They cannot just remove the steel balls to fix it. And on the other hand, when this one is deployed, there will be a fault code all the time for this seat belt pretensioner on the airbag control unit. That code remains there, but unfortunately I've seen that some guys, they put a resistance over here to erase that fault code to turn off the airbag warning light. That's really dangerous as well. So we are not supposed to do that. That resistor that they use is this one, which is just supposed to be used for seat belt pretensioner diagnostic. Because sometimes you have a fault on the seatbelt pretensioner, which is not caused by any accident. So there wasn't any accident. You see the airbag light is on. You hook up the scan till you see a code for seatbelt pretensioner. So in that case, for performing the diagnostic, you need to come up with some solution to simulate the pretensioner because we cannot measure the resistance on this component. Those fault codes are mostly pretensioner high resistance or low resistance and because we don't have a replacement part we use this kind of dummy resistors which is suggested on many workshop manual as well only for the diagnostics so for example imagine if on the pretensioner you have a connector just like this which sits right here on the pretensioner so in case of having that fault we disconnect the connector of course when battery negative terminal is disconnected for the safety reason and then we put this dummy resistor just right here like this. After putting this resistor over here, you are actually simulating the pretensioner. So after installing this, if you see the code goes away and airbag light is off, it means problem was from the pretensioner. And this is only for diagnosing the pretensioner, but unfortunately some guys use this one as a solution for having a bad pretensioner or deployed pretensioner. They leave this dummy resistor over here which is of course super dangerous and it's against the law so you got to be careful do not allow someone to do this on your car we have some videos on the channel for seat belt pretension diagnostic using this dummy resistor you can find the link for those videos in this video description so right now we see that the operation of this one is not really complicated and we know the caution and we know how to do the diagnostic for it let's move on to the second type the second type is this one I have removed this one from a Ford. And as you see in this case, seat belt pretensioner is on the buckle side. So it means in the event of accident, this pretensioner is gonna pull the buckle. And of course, because you fasten the seat belt, when this one is pulled, the seat belt is gonna pull as well. And that's how seat belt pretensioner works. But there is a difference in operation in case of this type of pretensioner, because we don't have retractor over here. There should be something to pull the buckle. And if you look closely on this one, as you see, we have two sets of wiring. This set of wiring, which does have two wires inside, it's for the buckle switch. And this set of wiring with two wires inside is for the igniter or seat belt gas generator. So in this case, seat belt gas generator is just right here inside. And inside this one, we have a piston, just like what you see right now on the screen. So this is the piston which is connected to the buckle with a cable. So you see the cable over here? This is the cable which is connected to a piston right here inside the, inside the pretensioner cylinder. And from the other end is connected to the buckle. So what happens, this cylinder is designed to give some room for the piston to move after the accident. So again, when accident happens, the gas generator is gonna generate that massive amount of gas. So as a result, because of the pressure increase, piston is gonna move in the cylinder. When piston moves, it's gonna pull this cable. By having this cable pulled, 
the buckle is going to pull as well buckle goes down so seat belt is going to get pulled as well so in this case when accident happens we have to replace the entire assembly just like this the seat belt and the buckle itself together again if some guys are suggesting to turn this one to a normal buckle it's really dangerous as well because they are just turning this one to a normal buckle with no pretensioner it means your car is not equipped with seatbelt pretensioner in that case anymore you have to replace the entire assembly like this and the last one is actually a combination of these two as i said i have removed this one from a nissan on this type on the driver's side for the safety reason we have two pretensioners so this one is on the retractor side on the same seat belt as you see on the other end of it we have this pretensioner as well which works very similar to the other one that i just explained so in this one we have a piston again so this piston is going to move all the way in this cylinder when this gas generator is deployed and generated that massive amount of gas the diagnostic for this one and the other spread pretensioner is the same if you haven't had any accident but airbag light is on with the seatbelt pretensioner fault code you just need to use this dummy resistor in the pretensioner connector just like this to simulate it to see if code goes away all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video so far let's go for deploying one of these pretensioners to see how they really work in case of accident so as you see seatbelt pretension is just right here this is the buckle and on the connector side i have inserted two pins just like this and I'm going to use the battery positive and negative to deploy it first of all please be careful that deploying any sort of pretensioner or airbag is really dangerous it should be done on a really controlled situation sometimes we have to deploy the pretensioner or airbags in case that they are faulty but they are not deployed before we put them in the damaged part of the storage we have to deploy them but for the deployment generally as workshop manual tells us for safe deployments we have to just manage some tires and put these ones or airbag inside the tires to make sure after deployment everything is safe what we are doing today is just for the experiment to see how this one works to give you the caution in case of pretensioner operation so i'm going to connect the cables to the battery as you saw when pretensioner deployed you see this end of the cable right now because piston already moved all the way in this cylinder that's why we see this end of the cables right now and the buckle itself is all the way pulled down all right guys we already know how seat belt pretensioners work and what's going to happen in case of deployment 